Hi and welcome in this new video, I'm very happy to see you here because you are about to discover the new features of Airflow 2.7. My name is Mark Lamati, Head of Customer Education at Astronaut, best selling instructor on Udemy and if you don't want to miss any videos about Airflow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm that will help me a lot. Without further ado, let's begin with Airflow 2.7. Imagine that you are running Airflow in production and maybe you have hundreds of data pipelines to monitor and manage. Before Airflow 2.7, you had two ways of filtering your data pipelines, either by the active state or the paused state. The active state tells you what data pipelines are ready to be scheduled, not what data pipelines are running. And for the paused state, you only know what data pipelines cannot be scheduled at that time. That was useful, but not enough. That's why you have two new tabs running and failed. Now you are able to see all DAGs that are running and all DAGs that are in failure. Just by clicking on one of those tabs, you are able to filter all of your data pipelines on those states. And that will save you a lot of time. You don't have to check every page to see what DAGs are in failure or running anymore. And speaking of features that will save you a lot of time, you have a new one, which is the cluster activity. Again, if you have Airflow running in production, then you want to monitor your DAG runs and task instances. But before 2.7, you had to set up your own monitoring tools in order to do that, such as Grafana, Datadog, and so on. But now with 2.7, you have this new page, Cluster Activity, that gives a starting point to monitor your DAG runs, task instances, DAGs, and so on. So first thing first, at the top of the page, you have the live metrics. So you can see what DAGs are ready to be scheduled, the top five longest DAG runs to finish, which is pretty useful to see what DAG runs are taking longer than expected, what pools are used, and more importantly, the health of your Airflow components, such as the metadatabase, the scheduler, and so on. At the bottom of the page, you can see the historical metrics. So for example, you want to know how your Airflow instance behave for the last week. You can see that just by filtering on the start date and the end date, and you will see the diagram states, the diagram types, and the task instance states. Don't get me wrong, you still need to set up your monitoring system if you want to have granular metrics. As you can see here, those metrics are pretty high level, but at least you have a way to monitor your Airflow instance out of the box, which is pretty useful. And I believe this page is gonna be improved quite a lot over the next Airflow releases. Oh, and by the way, there is an auto refresh on that page, so you don't have to refresh it manually to see the metrics. Okay, if we go back to the DAGs view and pick one of the DAGs, so let's filter on all and click on example DAG basic, you land on the grid view. I'm pretty sure that you know the grid view now, it took over the old tree view and has a better representation of your DAG runs and task instances. Also, you can see metrics about your DAG runs and much more. But something new in 2.7 is the new code tab that you have right there. So basically, you can access the code of your data pipeline from the grid view and you don't have to click here anymore, which is the old representation of your DAG code. Now you may say, hey, why do we have the code here and here? Like, isn't a duplicate? Yes, it is. I believe that ultimately all the tabs that you can see at the top, or at least the calendar, the task tries, the gun view, the code, and so on, will be under the grid view. So you will see all of those tabs here and not here anymore. That's what I believe is gonna happen in the future with Airflow. I might be wrong, I might be right. But in the meantime, I do recommend you to use the views that are under the grid view instead of the equivalent at the top because those views give a better representation of what you are looking for, such as the code or the graph. Another view that got improved but you don't see here that will be added to the grid view is the new Gaunt view. And the new Gaunt view helps you to better spot any tasks that are bottlenecks in your data pipelines. How? Well, because now you can just pick one of your tasks from the grid view and you will see the corresponding tasks in the Gaunt view right away. This is especially useful if you have many tasks with task groups and so on. As you can see right there, you pick your task group and you see the corresponding tasks in the Gaunt view. Something else to mention are the shortcuts, as you can see here. So if you want to become like a super Airflow user, and be super fast to interact with your task instances and DAG runs, then maybe the shortcuts can be useful for you. Just make sure that you select the DAG run or the task instance you want to interact with and then use the shortcuts. In addition, if you go to admin and connections, then add a new connection, now you can define if you want to see this button or not. For security reasons, you might want to disable this button and by default it is disabled. And you can change that by using a new setting which is test connection. Three options, disabled, you cannot click on the test button, so you can't test the connection from the Airflow UI. 
enabled, you can click on the button and so you can test the connection from the Airflow UI or hidden so you don't see the test button and you cannot test your connections on the Airflow UI. The last feature that I wanted to show you on the Airflow UI is that you can mark task groups as success or failure. You just need to go on the grid view, pick your task group and for example this one and then click on mark state as failed or success and that will apply to all tasks within the task group. For example, I want to mark this task group as success and you can see the entire task group turned in green as well as the tasks in that task group. This is pretty useful as you don't have to mark the tasks one by one. All right, that's it about the Airflow user interface. Now I would like to show you a new feature that you can use in your data pipelines and I'm sure you will love it. So imagine you have the following DAG with three tasks and you want to create a EMR cluster. If you don't know what is EMR, think of it as Spark, a data processing framework. Then you want to trigger a job in that cluster to process your data. And finally, you want to delete that cluster because you don't want to pay for something that you don't use anymore. You trigger the DAG that creates an EMR cluster and then process fails. Guess what? The EMR cluster keeps running, which is pretty bad. Even worse, you retry this DAG run, you create a new EMR cluster, process fails again, and then you have two EMR clusters running. This is the kind of situations you don't want to end up with. That's why there is a new concept in Airflow 2.7, setup and teardown. Basically, you mark a task as a setup task. This is where you create resources and you mark another task as a tier done task. This is where you tier the resources done. So for example, you create the EMR cluster from the setup task, then process fails, tier done will be executed and so your EMR cluster will be deleted, regardless of the upstream task states. That's the beauty of setup and tier done. Now you have a better way to manage the resources that you create in your data pipelines. Let me show you another example. Imagine that you have this DAG where you share data between your tasks and this data is stored in the Airflow Meta database using XCOMs. The problem with XCOMs is that they stay in your database as long as you don't remove them manually. And that can impact the performances of your Airflow instance if you have too many XCOMs. This is where you can improve this data pipeline by adding a tier done task at the end that it is in charge of cleaning the XCOMs that were created during the run of that DAG. Implementing the setup and the tier done tasks is as simple as marking a task as a setup task and another task as the tier done task. For example, here you have this data pipeline with three tasks, init, process, and end. You want to mark init as the setup task and end as the tier done task. For that, you go at the dependencies and then you call as tier done from the task end as you want to use this task to delete the resources and you pass the parameter setups with init as you want to use the task init to create your resources. And just like that, you've marked this task as the setup task where you create the resources and this task as the tier done task where you delete the resources. On the Airflow UI, you will see this icon on the init task that indicates this task is a setup task and you will see this icon that indicates this task is a tier done task. Notice that there is an implicit dependency between those two tasks as end, the tier done task, needs init, the setup task, to be successful in order to run. By the way, you don't have to limit yourself with one setup task. You could create another setup task and in the dependencies, just add the other setup task in the setups parameter. And if you take a look at the Airflow UI, this time you will see two setup tasks, as shown right there, and the dependencies between those two setup tasks and the tier done task. Last but not least, if you want to have only one tier done task without the setup tasks, you can do that. You can remove those two tasks and remove the setups. You can see now we have only one tier done task and that will be useful if you want to clean your XCOMs. There is so much more to say about setup and tier done. If you want to learn more about that, please let me know in the comment section below. I will be glad to make a video to help you. Something else that I love in 2.7 that will save you time is chain linear. Maybe you don't know that, but you have helpers such as chain, cross downstream and chain linear now that help you to set dependencies in an easier way. For example, in this data pipeline, you have the task A and you want to have B and C that depend on A, then D, E, F that depend on B and C, and finally J that depends on F, E, D. To set those dependencies, you can use chain linear in that way with A first, then B and C in one list, then D, E, F in another list, and finally J at the end. It is as simple as that. If you go on the Airflow UI, you will end up with the following data pipeline. If you want to do that without chain linear, you will have to put a lot of write bit shift operators and it might not be as readable as using the chain linear helper. Another improvement in 2.7 is for this use case. Imagine that you have one data pipeline with two task groups and as soon as one task fails, then you want to mark the entire DAG as 
failed. And you don't want to wait for all the tasks run and complete just to see the DAG run in failure. That's why there is a new DAG parameter you can use, which is fail stop. Fail stop is very easy to understand as soon as one task fails in your DAG, the entire DAG run is marked as failed and all the tasks that were running or didn't run are marked as skipped. So no more time wasted waiting for a DAG that will fail anyway. The last feature that I wanted to show you that I think will be useful for you is the new AppRise notifier. If you don't know what is a notifier, think of it as a new way of getting notified in Airflow without reinventing the wheel. For example, if you want to get notified by Discord, PagerDuty or Slack, you don't have to implement the logic for that. You can just pick one of those notifiers and get notified right away. So the good thing is now you have the AppRise notifier, but you may say, I don't even know what is AppRise. Well, as far as I know, AppRise is a free API that you can use to get notifications on over 80 different services. And one of those services is Teams. So if you want to get notified on Teams, you can use the AppRise notifier and then implement it as follow. You import the AppRise notifier, you use the method send AppRise notification, then you call that method in one of the callbacks on success callback or on failure callback, and you don't forget to create the connection AppRise con. And that's it. Just like that, you can be notified on Teams. Finally, there are some other features that I believe worth mention. And the first one is the new setting default deferable. If you don't know what is a deferable operator, think of it as a smarter version of an operator that optimizes resources while this operator is waiting for an event or executing something. Some operators can be deferable. And with that setting, you can enable all operators that can be deferable at once. In addition, you have the new policy Airflow Cluster Policy Skip DAG. Usually to deploy your data pipelines, you use Git Sync with one branch. And if you have multiple Airflow instances or environments, it can be hard to manage multiple Git branches. So by using that policy, you can define if that DAG has this tag, then I want to skip it for this environment. And that's what you are doing here. So you still manage one Git branch, but you can deploy your data pipelines on multiple Airflow instances easily. Also new options on the Airflow DB check command. So you can retry multiple times the connection to the database. This is particularly useful if you set up Airflow in a Docker environment where the database can be set up after Airflow. And last but not least, there is a new option read from DB for the Airflow tasks run command so that this command won't pass all the DAG files whenever you want to run a task. So you will save a lot of time, especially if you have many data pipelines. So that's it about Airflow 2.7. I hope you are pretty excited about it. If you want to learn more about Airflow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you can follow me on LinkedIn where I post daily tips on Airflow. Take care and see you for another video.